I'll start at the top. Ensembles of models. Okay. So basically we we have done some models. Okay. So now we have uh, we have a, a res the result of a workflow uh, trained and everything tuned and everything. Now we want to to see if we stack the model as it is and add some extra features like other models, but with the our previous work framed as as is, and then we see how it changed, basically. Okay, so we use this stack package. Can you, can you, can you read that? Like, like, you know, you can assemble the training set. Um, And then create a model and for, for each member and sample fit the model on the original training set. So basically, uh, so far, uh, as I understood, is a good way to um, test the, the model in production. So to see if that would be. Uh, with extra candidates, the type of models if that works well as well, of there's better results. So, there's even nice uh, notes in the um, in the book notes. They they did a like sort of. A, uh, Yeah, as you said, uh, create a data stack, which is our model. Then we add candidates, so extra models. Then we blend the prediction, fit again, and then see the results. Oh. So in random forests and the bagging and boosting examples that we did, we were already doing ensembling. We just didn't know it. Well, I didn't know it. Okay. Is it better to go through the uh, through the notes or or through the book? Or both. Uh, I'm happy both. to switch back. Y'all yeah. just tell me. Why don't we see this uh, stack uh, stack study models? The, the link just below the the sticker. Yeah, that that's the the stack package, which allows for these functions. Add candidates, and you add some models. Then you blend. Uh, this this uh, new feature that you add. And then you feed the members again and then predict. Predict our new data with predict. Yeah, there's a, um, if, we, if, if we scroll through, we, we, we go through this, this um, stack package guidelines. So we see an example with a frog test, the three frogs. And they, they, they got you uh, to all the passages. So they make a model and then they finally start. So instead, so basically the book, we, we, we should go back and take all the, 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 the models we have already trained and, and then do the stuff. Here you can see all the passages. Difference is they have these three frogs data set. Wow. So all of this accomplishes a 
using multiple different types of models. And then you create a super model that extracts the best parts from each model that you have below. And then it uses that. Did my understanding that right? Yeah, and basically, uh, it, it's um, the question is uh, uh, in exactly the point of the, the thing because what we did with uh, grid search and racing and the racing in the previous chapter, so we have used a, a certain number of different models and then we made uh a sort of the, it's, it's all, it seems like the same thing isn't it so we we already use different type of models we already tested all the models and say uh with matrices uh, which one was the best one right but now we start the result of these cho choices and then we add other candidates So as you can see, if you scroll up a bit, there's, there is a, um, a bit of a, a, a little, um, a, um, so footer up. So here, here, exactly here. So this is support vector machine and this, this is workflow. So if we, can we, can we just revisit all this, these steps? before to, to, to get to the stack, you know? So we do- Here's linear models. Yeah, here we have uh, um, the linear models. KNN. KNN. So it, a series of workflows, okay. Where is it? The start of the thing, okay. There's like a spec and then there's a- recipe then there's the workflow that has the spec and the recipe okay this is knn yeah so there's knn and there's a linear one and there was the what was the last one support vector machine and then support vector machine so here this is the control grid so all the things that we have done in the previous chapters you know few um you um, so here so the, the, the data uh, is split with training and testing then resampling yeah. then we do the recipe set the matrix and then set the, the grids with control stack grid the control stack resample this is very important okay because this is a stack function that we use and then we start uh making the models we use this this two later uh, and we do a bunch of different models knn linear models support vector machines we do the workflow okay now uh just a little before to get here just a little bit Okay, so we have the last uh, workflow, the result of the support vector machine. Okay, fine. So we scroll down and say that now we have created three model definition and we have the, the nearest neighbor, the support vector machine, which are the candidate members. And we, yeah. Yeah, and the linear model in the middle. Yeah. So we need to use the function stacks to initialize a data stack. And then we add the candidates, which are the three, uh, three models. And then in one table, we have the result of all three uh, uh, model features. And all the SVMs, yeah. 
in, in one tip. So you can see which one is, uh, the, they, they should be arranged as, as the best on uh, top. And the first column gives the, the first response value. And the remaining give the assessment set prediction for each assembled members. And then we fit the stack. So with this blend prediction. And then these are like percent contributions or something like that. Oh, there's 1.2, so I'm not sure what that is. Become members, okay. So it takes these four support vector machines, one K and N and, and the linear model. And then those are the members of the final output model. It's very fancy. Uh, then with this uh, auto plot, we can see how the matrix uh, works for the candidates. Is this individually? Yeah, it should be, but they, they are uh, one, two, three, four, five. They, Six members. Uh huh. Okay. Oh, I see. So there's six points here somewhere. Should have used a jitter. Um, you can see the mean, the R squared, and the RMSE. Okay, and then what is this? This is the penalty that we use for uh, there's a stacking coefficient which shows which one is the best. You see the linear regression disappeared completely. Yeah. What was the RBF of the support vector machine? Radial uh, basis function. Oh, okay. It's a hyperparameter. Must just be one of those outputs, okay. And then, and then, and then, then it fit, fit members function and collect parameters. So this is just for the support vector machine. in the in the book uh, which says about um, um, in the book yeah here they, they uh, made a different example so they use more options more and more models. Yeah, a lot more models. XG boost. For, for this for this data, uh, definitely the, the one which is the best. And then this is the basically the calculation um, for each model contribution. 
this is a H model contribution to the uh, for the prediction. Do you want to go back to the stacks page? Mm -hmm. No, it's the, it's the end of the stacks page. So they fit it and they're doing the same thing that we're doing in uh, in the book. So this so they this is back a little bit in the in the book. They're they're fitting the member models. Moderately better than our best single model. So are there, are there, are there things like, um, was it AIC where, where you, you can look at the complexity of your model and say the trade-off between the complexity and the predictive power is not worth the screwing around with a whole bunch of like models and ensembles of models and things like that. Yeah, I'm not sure how you would address that, Brandon. Yes, uh, that, that, that is when you choose within the predictors. So you choose uh, the best model. You, you are still like a sort of pre-processing level at that point, because you, you, you uh, decide for which predictor to add inside the model for making the model. You are not testing different models on a stack of data. So you have decided for your recipe, uh, for your receipt, you, you have decided for your data how, how the only modification that you will make uh, would be um, to adapt this data to, to your model candidate. But you, um, so basically the uh, AIC, it's a, a sort of. Uh, a IKK information yeah. criterion is what it stands for, I think. But yeah. I can't remember what the hell it's really about. Yeah, they're not mentioning it. Uh, um, I mean, I guess that's what, like, when you do uh, crossfold validation and stuff like that, that's what you're kind of testing. Yeah. You're saying. Yeah, I think that's what you're, what you mainly look at, how well you do on the test versus the training, that kind right. of thing. Yeah. That way, you're not. You're not overfitting. Overfitting, yeah. That's. Thank you. That was the word I was looking for. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> The, the only the only thing is the the function that we use uh, for example to retrieve the metrics um, here uh, so the the data where this concrete data so is it in the in the book in the book oh, in the book in the book okay yeah this is that's concrete you, data i thought it was um we use the frog things for 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 the stack package yeah and the same as in the notes oh it is concrete yeah yeah in the book they use concrete Uh, and they say that the, the race result, uh, as you say, because uh, when we use uh, the, 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 the chapter was the screening many models, the 15, you know? So when we put all the models together, we did the three uh, receive, uh, we did six models within uh, linear, nonlinear models, we put everything in a workflow set, you know, all the things there. Then we do we did a, a grid and a and a racing grid result and the racing result. Here they said that the racing to start ensembling, for example, if you read if you can see uh, here the racing result would be best to use. So this is after that. 
So after we have done all these things, the raising and everything, so we do a, one more. Um, uh, check, like, like to just prove it to ourselves that this was worth it, or that's the right yeah, choice? If, yeah, if the, there's a, something better we can use. Because we already tried the mask, uh, uh, the bag, the boosting, cubist, ma many more different models, you know? Six then we rows, said, yeah. then, then we said, we add uh, candidates to the concrete stack uh, data. We add candidates, which are the candidates from the racing. So all the models that we have already used it. This is an interesting statement here. So it's like, uh, are more efficient since they don't evaluate all configurations on all resamples. Stacking requires that all candidate members have the complete set so that it like trims down the results that are fed in further. It must be nice if you could say, hey, go back, fill in the holes, you know? then do your blending then it said why use the raising result instead of full set of candidate models contained in the grid result both can be used so But this might be due to the racing method pre-selecting the best models. Because obviously when we did many models and the racing and everything, then we we set the, 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 the parameters. So we did the tuning and everything. So now we stack the result and we take it back if I didn't if I did get right. I guess I don't understand that, right? Because if you're doing the grid, right, you're doing everything. And they're saying that they're finding better results because the race is pre-selecting the best ones. But wouldn't that imply that you, the full set, has all of the models? So why would you get better results when you're pre-selecting? I think they're saying better performance versus oh, it's just maybe, performance. Yeah, so yeah. so they might be saying because you're ruling stuff out quicker, you can get an answer. It, That's kind quicker, of hard. Perceiving less time. That. Yeah. All right. I missed the word performance. Sorry. No worries. No worries. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, because it seems like I find in my current position, <laughs> a lot of the issue is just how long it takes you to test things out. So the 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 quicker you can get your answer, the better. So yeah. Have, 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 it, has, have any of you used this? Federica, you asked us if, uh, if we were any stack professionals were available. And, uh, <laughs> we, um, I look to you and Steven because <laughs> yeah. so, so no, no offense, Isabel. <laughs> I think, I think maybe, maybe you've played with it too, but I feel like so you and I are in the same boat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so where so where I am now, we do some things with ensembles, but like a lot of the time, just uh, you know, tuning XG boost and getting a good XG boost result tends to tends to get us where we need to go. We have um, interpretability uh, factors as well. So going back to your uh, statement, Brandon, if if we come up with a very very complex method then it becomes harder to sell clients and if clients have questions it's like why did it say that oh <laughs> so yeah but um yeah i mean it's certainly part of the toolkit and and a good thing to know about absolutely well cool and then there's always that thing about you know, you can kind of zero in on and focus in on 
specific tools, kind of, you know, try to master those uh, versus just kind of casting a really wide net and saying, let's, let's try everything <laughs> and see what happens. Yeah, there's kind of just two, two schools of thought, I guess. What, what do you think, Stephen? Is it misguided to just kind of, if you don't know, just throw the kitchen sink at it and see what happens? See what floats I, to the top? I feel, I feel like as long as, um, I, I feel like the key thing is, in, and this is covered a lot in this book, just, you know, being sure that you know how to evaluate your models. So, so then at that point, when you have ideas, you can test them out and you could say, I am sure that this is better because, you know, look at these numbers. So, yeah, I, I feel like there's certainly room for, uh, you know, making those choices yourself and, and just trying, trying things out. Um, yeah. As long as you have the compute power. If you have the compute power, yeah, you could just go crazy. <laughs> just do crazy things. That's what auto ML is, right? You just throw the kitchen sink at it and hope for the best. So, mm. yeah. I was I was looking at this uh, definition, which says ensembling ensemble modeling is a process where multiple diverse models can uh, are created to predict an outcome. So in itself, the assembled modeling is a process. So this can be used either by using many different modeling algorithms or using different training data sets. So in itself, this, uh, this is a process named ensemble of modeling of models. Yeah, ensemble modeling. And there's a nice, um, even now, some articles. I don't know if they are. Um, I'll show you. Can I yeah, yeah, grab, grab the screen? Uh, within the data meaning process, for example, um multiple diverse models are created to predict an outcome either by using many different modeling algorithms or different training data sets so this is uh, the motivation for using ensemble models is to reduce the generation error of the prediction so in, we are now looking at the prediction results. I'm sure this is for uh, modeling productions. So as long as the base model are diverse and independent, the prediction error decreases when the assemble approach is used. Uh, Do I understand correctly that when it ensembles the models, based upon the math that was shown in, I forget where, one of the one of the books, it was like uh, this model times this weight, this model times this weight, this model times this weight. But what yeah. if your what if your response variable, the the predictive capacity of the model is better uh, in different parts of the uh, of the input variable, I guess. Uh, for example, like I was reading yesterday on brewing, and they were trying to predict, like, based upon the grain that you put into the beer, what the mm -hmm. color will be. And they said, well, these these three models are really good up till, um, like a porter, so like a dark amber beer. Mm -hmm. And then after that, they just go off the rails. They're they're completely wrong. And it's like, oh, okay. So, you know, like, you know what I mean? So like that, that low color, the predictive capacity is really good for this model. High color, the predictive capacity is good for this model. If you just do weights. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. It's not going to work out. But if you have like, if you have like, well, this, if, um... use this, prefer this one in the early stage and this one in the later yeah. stage, like, is there, 
is is that part of this too somehow or is it i think you probably have to manually do that like you you'd have to figure out regression right? yeah figure out where those breakpoints are and and do some decisions based on that although maybe if you're using like a tree model it will figure that out because it'll see it'll see that there's a wacky split that happens so that's what I always, yeah, that's the thing I wonder with models sometimes, because you'll see people will do things and then you, you realize, wow, the, actually the model's accounting for that. So it's like, yeah, it, it would be interesting to, to see yeah, what, what it would do. Or perhaps those fancier models that are capable of handling nonlinear relationships yeah. would just encompass that to begin with. I they, feel like they, intuitively, they using... though, it makes sense if, if if you had some way of weighting things but it was like a functional weighting so like at yeah. different points yeah so you're saying like at different points of the target variable you might weigh one real heavy but the other one real low and then it could change maybe that's yeah. earlier in the process or could has be. to do with your model selection they were using linear models and used one nonlinear model uh, yeah. i think it was a logarithm or or an exponent but but yeah mm -hmm. And then I found another uh, thing, another article here, which mentioned, can you see? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ensemble techniques, bagging uh, is based on making the training data available to an interactive process of learning. So, Re bagging reduces the variance and minimizes the overfitting. So this is one such a, uh, example of uh, such a technique. Then there is a random forest within bagging. Then boosting and stacking. Stacking is similar to boosting models. They produce more robust predictors. It's a process of learning how to create such a stronger model from all weakest learner, weak learners' predictions. So, What 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 would you conclude with this? <laughs> um, I put this in the chat as well. Other information. Hmm. Yeah. So this seems like all the same thing. I uh, I think it this because this is a different. Um, I think it, you you now have. Uh, decided for your data, you have uh, like um, tune, grid, set, everything, and then now you're trying to maxima maximize the result of your predictions. Without changing anything else, you're not going back to the data and like, uh, I don't know, do some other pre-processing things so uh, modifying other things. You know at the point that you want to um, maximize the result of your predictions. And then you throw it into production. Yeah. And pray. Here you go. Pray. <laughs> pray. <laughs> cool ship it yeah <laughs> ship it yeah totally awesome hey guys we only got one more chapter one we, more. we almost did it <laughs> well and federico you mentioned last time maybe also having another session kind of afterwards to to kind of go through the whole thing together well that's not a bad idea yeah i, I could see that yeah yeah if you like why not I'd be yeah. game.
<laughs> maybe run run through the run through the whole process with some yeah. model throw pick it out and run it on your own and walk through it together that'd be kind of cool oh maybe yeah what did we learn kind of thing what did we learn what questions do we still have a lot of questions oh, many many oh. <laughs> yeah that might not be a good one that might be too many sessions yeah but that's why i'm in yeah. the other islr book club i think yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, what, yeah you said i keep asking book. why and everyone's like yeah. well it's a different book but yeah um, right okay so, so next week um yeah. we'll do the the what is the final chapter it's uh inferential analysis mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i think we we do together as well so uh if we have a look at the chapter we all have a look at the chapter that would be much better because we i'll try to um yeah i'll, I'll try to prepare better next time i usually yeah. try to read at least read the chapter before but i was bad this week sorry yeah <laughs> me too i was traveling so it was it was difficult yeah, yeah. But even if I I'm read sort the of... chapter, I still have lots of questions. Yeah. <laughs> that would be cool. Maybe we could get uh, Max and Julia to be guests. Wouldn't that be something if we... <laughs> oh, my, my, my fault, because I've asked Julia. Julia said that she, she already did it. So yeah. I, should, I should ask my, uh, Mark. That's kind of a tall order, I know. I'm yeah, sorry. I didn't do that. So maybe we should do that now and see if at least we have two weeks left mm -hmm. he'd like to to join for, for answering some questions maybe i don't know i'll ask yeah it might be cool yeah if any of you would like to ask him <laughs> that would be <laughs> even better. who's your modeling heroes your modeling heroes that we could uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of who my modeling heroes are. <laughs> Probably Max and Julia is about it. <laughs> oh, um, uh, Andrew Gelman, but he's kind of in a different uh, sort of the Bayesian stand type stuff. Maybe Gavin and Gnome for I'm sure scams. that Steve, you have some some data to share with us from your company. <laughs> Oh, I get in big trouble. I can't share any data. Well, I haven't got any data to share. Got to find some, some public domain data. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's there's quite a few data sets. I mean, maybe we could just yeah. You can even just look on um, Kaggle. There's like a couple. Um, because like I poke in there sometimes. I noticed there was one, I think there's one about um an, oh fraud detection. That's kind of fun. So I was gonna take a look at that. That might be one to just kind of look at and see sort of what other people have been doing. Maybe we could revisit the Ames data set that we started yeah, with. Yeah, yeah. See if we could throw everything the neighborhood at price. And we could go work for uh Zillow, because Zillow had their <laughs> disastrous uh they're hurting. Oh, the funny thing about the Zillow thing is, though, I think it kind of eventually worked its way out that it wasn't so much the problem with the model as like people in corporate kept wanting to override things and put their own tweaks on it. So in the end, I think it kind of vindicated the poor modelers that were being beat up. <laughs> so yeah, they were just kind of following, you know, following the word from from headquarters. You got to switch this model. We don't like what it's doing. <laughs> Oops hazards of uh, the field <laughs> okay cool. great so we'll see you next week yep see you all next week all see right you take care week. everyone happy good weekend have a good week and week see ya <laughs>